Mm, so hello everyone, welcome to Astrology Today. Um, it feels like amazing things are happening on some kind of level and um, I've had a lot of sort of downloads around almost like seeing what's going on as, as computer coding and sort of decoding and recoding different things. And one of the things that feels very significant is um, this whole kind of realm of good and evil, and also whether God is inside ourselves or outside ourselves. Um, and they seem kind of interconnected. So I'm just going to share my own story around that and see how that resonates. And it doesn't really matter which religion we're talking about, because it's more about the impact of certain belief systems on our sense of freedom, I guess, and, and our ability to act from our inner world. Um, so when when I was about 11, uh, my parents were quite religious in the Anglican faith, Christian faith, and my dad had some kind of um, epiphany experience actually with the Archangel Michael. So it's interesting that that is sort of coming back in. And whatever happened with this um, epiphany, which he talked about a bit but not a lot it really turned his life around so he became a very kind of committed christian and he also um like he used to drink a lot and he completely stopped drinking and um and he could be a bit aggressive when he was drinking so um in some ways our family life got a lot better because he stopped drinking and he sort of started down this new path but he could also be very zealous in his um in my mom as well in their beliefs um and they joined an evangelical church and um and they became a bit obsessed with evil. So pop music was evil. Many of my friends were evil. <laughs> you know, so, so there were all kinds of things going on that they identified as evil. And I had quite severe mental health problems when I was younger. I was diagnosed with bipolar and, and then it was changed to post-traumatic stress disorder. But one of the huge things in my recovery has been realizing how much I felt that I was evil. And, and so I've been going through this kind of process of um, a return to innocence, you might say, return to belief in my own goodness and the goodness of other people as well. Um, so I had a, a big um, awakening in my late 20s, which involved the white lions of Timberbati. Um, and it was it was very amazing. And I, I it, it was preceded by a dream. And then I went to South Africa. I went, met a white lion who bit my knee. <laughs> And so it set me off on this whole path. But what was kind of interesting is that the white lions in the African shamanic tradition are seen as Christ uh, in an animal form. Um, and so even in those early days in my late 20s, this is my first Saturn return, this was all going on. There was this interface between shamanism and um and Christianity. And I feel that a lot of my life has been kind of trying to find my way with these things and feeling a calling to both in a way. Um, so then um, jumping ahead in my late 40s, um, when I was with Jay, she had heart trouble, she nearly died. 
And we decided to go on a long pilgrimage on these ley lines, the St. Michael again, <laughs> and Mary ley lines that cross the south of England. And, um, and I had this amazing epiphany experience there where I, I kind of felt the incredible love of Christ and, um, and that set me off, actually. Um, I might have misinterpreted a bit, but um, I decided to explore becoming a priest. That's how powerful this experience was. And I spent a couple of years um, before realizing I really wasn't cut out for the priesthood. <laughs> And the the day I sent my letter in, it turned out it was my exact Chiron return, and um, and Phoebe actually invited me to join Soul Tribe two days after I decided, no, I can't be a priest. It's it's like not aligned with my integrity, and you know I wouldn't ever be able to do astrology again, for example a lot of my poetry writing would have to go so it just it just wasn't a fit really um but it was another huge thing where I went into Christianity and it was very healing because I had a lot of fear around um Christianity and evil and a real resistance to being indoctrinated and you know the way the religion manifested um and and all its problems really it was like quite astounding that I would even think about being a priest in this religion that's caused so much damage in the world um but that's how powerful this experience was that I'd had um and so I mean that was the journey really so again, there was this whole kind of Christianity coming up again. And then um, the latest installment of it is with my dad dying, um, is in that those last few days, I, you know, they were playing their kind of happy clappy music as I call it, but I completely embraced it. And in a way I was always resistant. They probably wouldn't even put it on in front of me. Um, but you know, he was dying and this was his dying time. So I completely embraced what he wanted, what they wanted. Um, and kind of gave myself over to it. And in that whole process, again, I felt this, whole sort of dissolving of our karma. Um, my dad was a huge nature and animal lover. So almost like this polarization between old religions and nature and Christianity started to dissolve like within myself and some kind of, even I'd even use the word transfiguration happened between me and my dad as he was dying. Um, and so I want to share a poem with you um, that I wrote when I got back here and I went for a swim in the sea and it was part of my guardian ritual in the dream arc and my guardian came as the snake um, and um, the, the white python it ended up being in the end but I think the the poem kind of embodies this healing that happened. Um, okay, so let me read the poem to you. So it's called Pythia Rising, and the Pythia are the Python oracles of Delphi. I am Pythia Rising, white python and oracle of old. From ancient Libya I come. Softly and inch by inch, my body molds itself to the wet grey slate and thin crusts of quartz. I feel all that is beneath me as I slither into the waves. The surge of the sea lifts me up, the powerful yet gentle arms of the ocean mother enclose me. Exhale towards the deeper currents. Inhale towards the shale I have left behind. 
Far above in the sky, the gannet with her thin white body and long black tip wings. She soars above me curiously and we play together, swooping a wave and wind, ecstatic with our mutual experience of life. A new picture is being painted by younger hands than mine, old stories brushed over, myth-making rituals as Arachne's golden threads weave the web of life. I have been for asleep for a long time, and only today as the winter ocean touched my body did I truly feel a deep awakening, a calling to Python. I followed it, and now on the endless hallelujah of rainbows and monkey weddings, I shout joy to you. Finally, we made it to that one place, that infinite space where the daughter awakens and becomes unified with the father in all beliefs and all timelines, Christ consciousness entwined in an eternal dance with Pythia rising. Hmm. <laughs> so I wanted to share this kind of personal journey with this whole thing about good and evil, shamanism and Christianity feels like so much of my, my life work really is about the unifying of these seemingly polarized things. And I've been wanting for a while to do something on St. Michael and Lucifer. And it's only when I'm writing the story today, like St. Michael or the Archangel Michael's energy, that kind of flaming sword has been there kind of in the background all along. And Lucifer is also the morning star. So as Venus came in the morning, that was what, people called Lucifer, um, the, the light one, you know, who drops to earth, or the rebellious angel. So what I want to do is look now astrologically at um, Lucifer, St. Michael, and Lempo, who is a Finnish goddess, who um, was demonized as evil, because where they are right now, I think is is really interesting and tells a story. So let me go into this. So firstly, I'm gonna share today's chart. Um, here we go, I like this little bit of mod, like modern day art. This is Lucifer and Michael here, and they kind of look so similar, don't they? It's like, which one is which? You're not really sure. Okay, so this is today's chart. Can I, I can't open it any wider here. But what's really interesting is we have this exact conjunction of Mars, the Sun, and Ceres. So if you imagine Mars is the, is the, the young male child, Ceres is the mother and the Sun, and they're all exactly conjunct today so that's very powerful um venus is in jinky 48 line two um and 48 is to do with the goddess wisdom the sophia wisdom so she's in a really strong place and libra is a ruler uh sorry venus is a ruler of libra so a uh, talk a bit more about that in a bit um we've still got Astraea and Vesta they're both now going retrograde together so it's interesting how long these two the priestess and the sacred artist are traveling together they're they're kind of our real goddess power I feel this year um and Okay, so this was the amazing thing. I felt really drawn to look at Limpo. And when I looked her up, she was exactly conjunct Uranus. They're slightly apart now because I did this on Friday. Um, 
And if you remember, the new moon was opposite Uranus. So this is like a, you know, real breaking open energy we've got right now. So this whole thing has been coming through about almost like seeing the energy unfold as computer programming. And what we're trying to do is decode ourselves and then recode ourselves. And this is the language that came to me is quite interesting because Tina, who some of us know as well, has been using the same language of finding the zero point of stillness and neutralizing the forces of karma, which as soon as we react to karma, you know, the karma keeps coming back and forward. Um, so we've got to try and find this open hearted, neutral space where we can somehow hold the forces of good and evil and almost like poof, dissolve the energy. Um, so today, uh, Lucifer is at six degrees Aries, and this is Gene Key 17, line four. Um, programming partner of Gene Key 18. Um, so you can find your own Lucifer, and um, this is is on Taraka, and it's um, number 1930. So I really encourage you to look up where your Lucifer, Michael, and Lempo are, and what kind of story they tell together. So I was very interested in this, okay, because um, the 17 is opinion, the shadow, and 18, the shadow is judgment. Then we move into the gifts of the far seeing and the integrity, and the cities are omnipience and perfection. So when you get to omnipience is being able to see from every direction, and Richard Rod talks about being able to see almost like through every cell in your body. And so when we reach omnipotence and perfection, there is no good and evil because everything is unfolding in a way that is trying to get us to evolve to higher levels of consciousness. So we we are facing these big challenges, the, the you know, the wars going on in the world. And, and you think, well, how could that be perfect? But it's perfect in the sense that it's karma playing itself out. And we get to decide how the story is going to end by how we react. So then we have some Michael, um, who you have to look up on astro.com in the extended section. And... Um, Michael today is at zero degrees Aquarius and conjunct Pluto. So as I said earlier, Lempo is conjunct Uranus. Michael is conjunct Pluto. And this is Gene Key 60 line five, which is called the cracking of the vessel. And it's moving from the shadow of limitation to the gift of realism and to the city of divine justice. Um, so my experience of divine justice, we worked with um, 60 quite a lot in one of the Venus cycles, is that divine justice is trying to bring in that neutrality, is trying to end people acting out karma and, and keeping the whole cycle going. Um, so there's this body called Varuna as well, who kind of encourages us to not do anything because as soon as we do something in a way we depending on what we're doing we're possibly contributing to to the game still being played i guess okay so limpo is also on taraka io and right at the bottom she's a trans neptunian object um, so Lempo is a 22 degrees Taurus, um, exactly conjunct Uranus. That was on Monday. And this is Gene Key 23 line five, moving from complexity to simplicity to quintessence. And I know that's going to connect for a few of you here. 
Uh, as I say, Lenpo is this Finnish goddess who came to be demonized through Christianity. Um, but it feels like the story could be through Buddhism, through Judaism, through Hinduism, because it's all about us, you know, kind of polarizing, I guess. That's the key word. Um, so as a trans-Neptunian object, remember these are right now in our in the solar system, um, right on the edges. So she asks us to contemplate how religious ideas or dogma separate us from others, to recognize this good and evil and all, and the only place we can do anything about it is inside ourselves. So we are recoding ourselves in order to recode Gaia and and the whole solar system really um, that's how how big it feels okay so this is um just read this is from the dream arc to do with Merlin the bird Merlin which I've been contemplating um I saw Merlin bird the day before my dad died the day after he died and then I just saw one um in Cornwall like was hovering right over us for about 30 minutes this is last week so it's a very small hawk um a merlin and this is the message contemplate divine pride breathe the breath of the buddhas into your heart see yourself as immense see yourself as god moving behind the scenes orchestrating goodness, love, make yourself invisible, don the cloak of invisibility. Even the smallest selfless acts are magical acts. Go out into the world and make a difference. Make this lifetime really matter. Let it shine our light out into the aeons, influencing the past and the future. Become the magus. The Magus is a figure who spans the past and the future. He or she is beyond time and space, beyond past and future. The Magus is eternal, omnipresent. The Magus is within each of us, invisible, waiting, always waiting. So that seemed perfect, really. Um, so this is Venus's morning star as Inanna Ishtar. And, and as I said, that's um, Lucifer is also the, called the morning star. So here we have Venus in Libra. She's at 48 line two. And I think you'll find some of these images interesting. So Libra is all about this balance. First of all, we have the sun and the moon. And then here we have um, Toth as the Ibis bird, who has been very present. Um, and, and we have the two serpents, the Kundalini yoga serpents of male and female in balance there. And then we have Hathor, the cow goddess, and she is Venus. You can see the star above her head there. And we have the rose and the white feather. Oh, no, that's the heart, actually, and the white feather. So this is all about the lightness of our hearts. And they are um, weighing people's hearts before admitting them into the afterlife. And here we have the rose and we have the sphinxes, who are a combination of the bull of Taurus the eagle of um, Scorpio, the lion of Leo, and the angel of Aquarius. So there's lots of symbolism in here. The floor is all about the balance of forces in the universe. So these are the Libra keys. Um, so Venus has just passed through the 46 ecstasy the 18 perfection. She's now in wisdom, 48. Then she's going to go into the 57 clarity, the 32 veneration, and the 50 harmony. 
um, the 28th of November next Monday, she'll be exactly conjunct the south node. So we'll do some kind of healing, I think, next week, actually, around the past, which is the south node. And then Venus into Scorpio on the 4th of December. So these are all kind of happening in the month ahead. Um, and as I say, Venus is a ruler of Libra. So she's very powerful right now. So date for your diaries is Saturday the 9th of December from 8 to 10 will be our next Venus moon gate. The heart chakra, it's Jinky five, uh, sorry, five degrees Scorpio. Um, so we're going into that really deep, dark winter Scorpio energy. And it's 28 line four, uh, moving from purposelessness to totality to immortality. And I always feel like totality, this is what Inanna is about. She's inviting us to reclaim the total parts of ourselves. And it's in the heart line, the line four. Um, so if you would like to make any offering to that, um, to that ceremony, please get in touch because that would be lovely. And hopefully um, Patricia and Cynthia, you will do your, your usual lovely things for it too. Okay, so any thoughts on that? Has the story of good and evil, the story of what's inside, is God inside you or outside you? Do these themes resonate? Or just anything really you'd, you'd like to put down? And if you know where your Lempo, Lucifer and um, St. Michael are, you could put them in the chat if you like and have a look at those. I'll share a little bit. Um, my Lemco is 